So right now we have our train image. We just have 10 values. And then when we decode those 10 values, this is act like the image that we reconstruct. So this is really, really close to our input training image as we can see. Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this neural networks tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about autoencoders. So we're going to talk about like what is actually like autoencoders, what can they be used for? And then at the end of the video, we're going to see an example on how we can actually like create our own autoencoders where we're encoding some data to actually compress them. And then we can actually like deco uh, decode it again so we can reconstruct information from like uh, fewer features that we have. Like for example, an image, we can then downsample our image onto like a feature vector. And then we just have a number of different kind of features describing our image, then we can decode uh, that vector again, or like those values or that those features. And then we can actually reconstruct our image again. So it can be used for compression and stuff like that. But first of all, remember your Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join channel, chat about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. And also, if you have some pro problems in your own projects, you can also uh, get my help if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So first of all here, we're going to go through a couple of slides where we're going to talk about like what is actually like autoencoders. We're going to see some of the examples, talk about what it is, how can we actually construct them and some different types of autoencoders. And then at the end of this video, we're going to into an example in code, how we can actually create our own autoencoders. So we both create like the encoder side and also the decoder side. And then we're going to use this MDIS data set as we can see here to the left. So we actually have an original input and then we actually compress our data down to this compressed representation, which is this like kind of like code vector containing different kinds of features. So instead of we, for example, have this 28 by 28 image that we can actually like decompress that or like compress that down to a representation where we maybe only have like eight, 10, five values where we actually like store all the information in our image in those values. And then we can then have a decoder side where we can decode our uh, compressed representation as we can see in this figure. And then we can actually reconstruct our uh, original input by by having this like compressed data and then we decode it. Uh, so we can actually go from the original input to the to the reconstructed input or like the reconstructed output. And then we can compare those and we can see the results and the accuracy um, of our reconstruction. So up here to the right, we can actually see we have this X, which is just our input to our neural network. And then we actually just have this F here, which is our encoder that we pass our um, our input to. And then we will have this H here, which is just our compressed um, representation. So we store all our values here in this H value. And then when we apply our T function, which is our decoder, then we go back to this R value, which is the reconstruction. So we're trying to map from X to R. And then in the steps in between, we have these uh, comp compressed representation. This is just one application of autoencoders as we were going to talk about, but this is really nice and actually like really cool that we can then compress our data down to like only a few values and then we can reconstruct everything again uh, by only using those few values. So here again, we just have another representation of an autoencoder. Again, we have an input, then we flatten our input into um, our fully connected layers here. So we can both use autoencoders with fully connected layers, but we also can, we can also use it with uh, convolutional neural networks. So auto uh, convolutional uh, neural networks used for autoencoders. And uh, we're going to talk about that here as well. And in the later videos, uh, we're going to use CNNs to actually like create order encoders. But in this video, we're just going to keep it simple. We're starting off and then we're going to use a fully connected layer, uh, which which actually like corresponds to this neural network that we have here in the, in the figure or in the image here, where we have all these input parameters. And then we will have these hidden layers. And then we can see our code layer here, which actually contains three values. It can contain all the information that we have in our image to the left. And then when we decode it again, we can see that uh, we get more and more layers up till until we get this output layer, which would actually like be our reconstruction of our image as we can see here. So again, the idea behind here is that we have an input, we compress it down to a couple of values or like a couple of features that can describe this image that we've encoded. And then we can decode it again by taking those values and trying to reconstruct our, our input. So this is actually just one, um, one example of an autoencoder. So now we're going to talk about the applications of autoencoders. So first of all, we can actually like have something called overcomplete version, and we can also have an undercomplete version. The difference between between those two here is that if we have an overcomplete version, we actually like we're having more neurons or like more uh, uh, like neurons or nodes 
in the layers or like in the hidden layers. So in the last example that I just showed you, we actually had an uncomplete version where we have like, if we're taking uh, uh, 28 by 28 and then we're flattening that, then in the next layer, we would actually like need a lower number than our input layer to actually like have an uncomplete version. But if we have more neurons in the, in the hidden layers, then like the more, the deeper we go in the net, uh, like if we have more neurons per layer, then we actually like have an overcomplete version of an autoencoder. It can be used for regularization and a lot of other different kind of stuff um, as we're going to see in, 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 in future videos, but it's a bit harder to learn or like for the autoencoder to actually like learn when we have an overcomplete version compared to an uncomplete version as we're going to see in the code example um, in this video. But the uncomplete version, we have our input layer, then we have, a, a, and the next layer will have fewer neurons than our input layer and so on until we come down to our code layer or like our compressed uh, representation of our data. And then when we go back again, we just do the exact opposite of what we did in our encoding layer layers. So we can use our under complete version here for compression of data, as we talked about nonlinear PCA machine. So it's also some kind of like um, compression of data and describing different kind of stuff. So we have this uh, principle uh, component analysis, which is just a nonlinear PCA machine uh, where we can use also encoders for that. And also this algorithm for under complete version is also forced to learn patterns, interest in data. So we can actually like do classification and stuff like that with also encoders as well when we're using this on the complete version. So another example uh, that, that I'm going to show and that we're going to look at in the code. So we actually have the denoising autoencoders as well. So the idea behind denoising autoencoder, autoencoders is that we're actually like trying to corrupt the input that our autoencoders are trained on. So we actually like try to, to apply noise on the input data before we actually like doing this uh, reconstruction of our output because the more we actually like denoise or like the, uh, corrupt our input, the better it will be at the output or like trying to reconstruct uh, the output if we're trying to make a general solution because we, we don't actually just want to train it on like a, a data set and then we just want to actually reconstruct that data set, but we want to actually like have a general solution where we can pass in images that our autoencoder haven't trained on before. And then we can actually also reconstruct those outputs. So we can use this denoise autoencoders uh, auto here where the output is kept clean. We can see like this top a lot down here at the bottom. So we have our input. We try to corrupt the input here with our X. And so we get this X bar at the top. Then again, we just apply our encoding F function. We have our H, which is our uh, down sample or like our code representation, the features in our auto encoder. Then we apply our G function, which is the decoding. And then at the end, we will have this L here, which is actually like just uh, kind of the loss. So we can see that the loss here is the difference between the clean input and a reconstructed output. So we actually like want to get those as close as possible, but when we're training our denoising autoencoders, we will get better results the more we're actually like corrupting our input when we're training these autoencoders if we want to create a general solution that can reconstruct images that it hasn't trained on before. So before we're going to talk about convolutional neural, uh, neural network autoencoders, we're just going to look at an example here with the denoising autoencoders. So we can see here that noise on the input, it actually like regularizes the autoencoder and results in smooth filters, as we just talked about. So the more destruction we have our, on our input and the more noise we actually like apply on our input, the better results we will get because we are actually like doing this regularization with noise on the input. So down here at the figures or like the graphs, we can actually like see the graphs or the results that they got from the research paper uh, for these denoising autoencoders. So we can see here that if we're not destroying the inputs at all, we can just see here down at the bottom at the graph or like the pay, uh, image D here. So the neuron A here with 0%, we can see that this is just pure noise at, at the output here when we're actually like trying to extract these features and the reconstruction of our images. And then we can see the more noise we actually like the, uh, deploy. So we can see we have both 20, 10%, 20%, 50% uh, destruction here in the images. And we can see the more destruction we have on our input and we can also see it in, in figure A, B, and C. But we can see the more destruction we have on input, the more features and like the better features we're actually like able to reconstruct at the output. So this can mean, for example, that we're able to predict between a one and a seven in the MNIST data set. And if we're actually using these denoising autoencoders, we haven't destroyed any inputs, we're not applying noise to it, then we probably couldn't um, figure out like if this is a one or a seven because those numbers um, are actually like really close to each other. 
but if you're if you're applying noise on the input we we could actually like the difference could actually be that we can see the difference between a seven um, and a one as we can see here at uh, figure d at the end here with 50 percent uh, destruction so we can see like this bl black like circle kind of thing here which is actually like um the difference between a one and a seven when we're trying to reconstruct uh the seven and the mnist data set with our denoising auto encoder so last thing here that we're just going to have an introduction to before we're going to jump into the code is convolutional auto encoders uh, we're going to cover that in another video as well so this is just a simple video where we're talking about like just some um, artificial auto encoders like some really standard auto encoders with fully connected layers but again in other videos we're going to talk about convolutional auto encoders so this is just more to give you an introduction we're going to see an example in a short while here on um on uh, these auto encoders how we can actually do the encode on the MNIST data set how we can actually like reconstruct um images from the MNIST data set by just applying or like training our auto encoders on the MNIST data set so here we can see that convolutional neural networks are used for doing better auto encoding of images so if you're working with data of, uh, that is images and you want to create your auto encoders where you have an input and you want to do reconstruction of images it could be MNIST it could be all different kind of images that you can that you can think of then we should actually like use convolutional auto encoders to do that instead of just flattening our uh, images and then use just standard auto encoding with fully connected layers um, in between and also when we're using convolutional auto encoders we can actually just use the transpose convolution uh, for the decoding or the upsampling side so we just use convolutional layers to do the decoding or like the encoding and then when we go the other way around we can actually use transpose convolution so we actually get this upsampling effect so we will end up in the last layer with our uh, reconstructed image down here at the bottom we can see the kind of like the pipeline so we have an image we have some convolutional layers with pooling in between so we actually like downsample our image in our encoding part and then at the end we will have some different kind of features ma feature maps describing um, our input image which is way lower and than the dimensions of our input image and then we can do deconvolution or like uh, uh, the, this transpose convolution which is called like dec in the, on the decoding part uh, side or upsampling where we're just using unpooling so on the way down in the, in the encoding we're using pooling when we're upsampling we're using unpooling and deconvolutional layers or transpose convolution uh, to get this higher dimensional image here at the reconstruction um, at the end of our convolutional uh, autoencoders again so let's now jump into google colab here where we're actually like going to create this autoencoder and implement it from scratch and this video here we're going to use pytorch to actually like implement um, our neural network load in the data set and then train our autoencoder and then we're going to see how we can actually reconstruct um, images from the mnist data set with our autoencoder so first of all here we're just going to import the different kind of modules so we're going to import tor tor vision uh, the torch functional um, module here as f and also matplotlib so we can display what is going on and the different kind of images and our reconstructed images so we're going to run this block of code so import the modules so down here we're just going to import the data set from torch vision we're going to use the mnist uh, data set as we've done in in previous videos as well then we're going down here and actually like taking the data and then we normalize our data here so we take the floating values of our data so all the values here we're just taking the values dividing it by 255 here which is actually like just corresponding to normalizing our values so instead we have values or intensities in our pixel values between 0 and 255 we just have values between 0 and 1 and then we're just going to have this view here so we reshape our image here or like our data um, so we actually have this 28 by 28 with one channel image so we have a grayscale image with 28 by 28 dimensions this is just the dimensions of the MNIST uh, or like the images in the MNIST data set we're going to run this block of code we will download the data here and then we actually just store our data in this variable that we can use later on to just pass into our auto encoder and train that so here we're going to create a class for our x like sequential model or like our auto encoder neural network so we're just going to have our class autoencoder we're going to use the nn module to actually like create the neural network here from pytorch then we're going to have an our, our init function here inside of our class so when we initialize initialize our class here or like an object of the class or the autoencoder it will go in and create this uh, sequential model here which will just correspond to our autoencoder that we're going to train um, on our mnist data set so first of all here we're just going to have this flattened layer so instead we have at 28 by 28 
image we're just going to flatten it out so that so we'll just have like one long vector of all the values or all the pixel values then in our first linear layer here so again we're just using dense layers so in, in, in PyTorch here we're using linear layers the input here will be 28 by 28 um, so this will just correspond to the image dimensions of the MNIST images then our output here from our layer so the first hidden layer will have 100 neurons so again we're using this on the complete model because we want to do this uh, co compression of our data that we can then decode later on. Then we'll have used the ReLU activation function. Then we'll have another layer where we just have this uh, these 100 uh, input, input neurons and the output neurons will be 10. So this is actually just our encoder side of our neural network. And then when we decode it again, we just need to do the opposite here. So we take all 28 by 28 values and then we store in, in actually like only 10 values. And by these 10 values here, we have actually compressed our data uh, by a really large factor. So all the information in our image is stored in these 10 values. And then we can use these 10 values here to actually like reconstruct our image on our decoder side. So on the decoder side here, we'll just have a linear layer again, where we just take 10, like the, the 10 values that we have from our uh, code layer or like from a feature vector. And then we have hundred values here or like hundred neurons in our next hidden layer. Um, and then again here in the last hidden layer, we will have, or like on the, in our output layer, we will have an input of 100 neurons. And then we will have the output here, which corresponds to the image dimensions, because this is what we want when we want to try to uh, try to reconstruct our image. So we need the dimensions of our image, and then we can use the sigmoid um, activation function to actually, like, um, to actually like get our output here for our reconstruction. Again, we just have this function encode, so we can actually like just call in the encode part, so we can see all the values that we have in our feature vector or like in our code vector. And then when we decode it again here, we will just call this self.decode, and then we just pass in our input. So it could be like these feature vectors that we get from our, uh, which is the output from our encoder. We can pass that into our decoder, and then we can just view it with this shape. So we'll just, instead of, we have all these flattened values, so we just have one vector with all the values in the last layer of our decoder. Then we'll just view it here as 28 by 28 and in a, in a one ch single channel image, 28 by 28. So we can actually see uh, the image. So we'll have this image, uh, image dimensions here again, which is 28 by 28. So we can see the reconstructed image. And then we can just do a forward pass here in our actual like um, neural network or in our autoencoder and a forward pass will actually like just be passed on an input to the encoder and then the results or like the output from our encoder, we just pass that through our decoder and that will be uh, a forward pass and a reconstructed, um, reconstructed image from our input. So that we can just run this log code here, it will create the class or like the class module here uh, that we can then use. So our model would just be equal to autoencoder, we can set dot .coda so we'd actually like use the TPU to train our autoencoder. So if you want to do that, you need to make sure you go up to runtime here, change runtime type, and then you need to select this hardware accelerator, and then you need to choose this GPU and hit save. So we can actually use this GPU here in Google Colab for free to train our neural networks and also our autoencoders. As you know, if, you have went, if, if you've been through all the videos here in the deep learning uh, tutorial. So here our model would just be equal to our autoencoder. And then we also need to set up an optimizer where we just go into PyTorch and then we'll just use the uh, Atom optimizer. And we're in, inside the optimizer, we're just going to pass in all the parameters for a model. So these are the parameters that we want to actually like optimize and tune during training of our neural network. So we're just going to hit this play button so we can actually like run this code here. We will get the model. It will take some time here and set up the optimizer. Then when we have done that, we can actually like go down and create a training loop. So again, we're just going to have a for loop running through all the epochs that we want to do. So again, we just have a for loop here running 25 epochs. And then inside of that, we will actually like create batches with a batch size of 32. So we actually like take our MNIST data set, split it up into batches of 30 to 32, and then we just run through the whole batch. And then after we've been through a whole batch, we have actually like completed an epoch. We're updating our weights and our parameters of our neural network or autoencoder and then we just do it over and over again for 25 epochs. So here we're just going to take our data, which are going to take 20, 22, uh, like 32 um, data points or like images. We're going to put it on the GPU and then we just have our input here or like our data 
that we're just going to to pass into our model. So after we pass it through a model, we know that the return type or like the return of our model is the reconstructed input. So we actually just have our input and then we have the reconstructed output or like the reconstructed input. And then we just have our loss here, which will just be binary cuts across entropy because we just have like these, um, we just have binary values that we want to calculate the loss for. And then we just pass in our reconstructed input and our input here as well. So it will just be the difference between the reconstruction and the actual like ground truth or the input uh, that we want. So we want to minimize this loss here. So ideally the loss should be uh, zero because then there wouldn't be any differences between the reconstructed output uh, when we actually like, uh, compare to the input. This is often not the case because we lose some information when we're actually like, compressing our data, but the loss here can still be really low when we're using these autoencoders. So again here, we're just going to have our optimizer. So this will just be the step on how we can actually like do um, to, to actually like uh, calculate the gradients, update our weights, uh, like calculate our loss, upgrade our weights, weights in the um, in the actual like autoencoder, and then we just do that over and over again for each epoch. So again, for optimizer, we just call zero grad. So we're great uh, like um, actually calculating the gradients. Then we're doing a backward pass here with our loss function. So we use the loss to actually like do a back propagation throughout our neural network. Update the weights again, as we know when we're doing this optimize. Uh, step we update our weights we just repeat the process over and over again for all the images in our MNIST data set we do that 25 times and then we hope that our loss has actually like decreased then down here we're just going to take uh, the random data like the data here and then we're just going to take uh, and, and sample it randomly for each epoch that we are running through so it doesn't take in the data uh, in the same order every time we're just going to shuffle our data here for each of the epochs that we are running. So we just shuffle the data for all the epochs that we're running. At the end here, for each epoch, we're just calculating the loss and displaying the loss so we can actually see if it is decreasing over the number of epochs or like while we're training our autoencoder. So again, we can just get the loss here by taking like this loss that we, that we initialized and then we're just going to take the item of that, which will be the loss um, of our neural network or like the, our binary cross entropy loss which is the difference between the reconstruction and the actual like ground truth input. So now we can just run the blob code here and then we'd like to like train our autoencoder. We can see that it has started epoch one out of 25. We see for the first epoch, we get a loss of point, uh, point 0.1552 uh, here. Then we can see for the second epoch, our losses actually like decreased. So now we had a loss of uh, 0.1270. Again, for a third epoch, it just keeps decreasing here. We can see that now in the fourth epoch, it actually like increases. And then we're just waiting for the fifth one here. It decreases a bit here again, but we can see it is still around 0.12 um, in loss. It is actually like really, uh, really nice loss when we're just using this really simple um, autoencoder. As we can see, we just have these a, a couple of hidden layers um, inside here, and are we're just actually like representing our whole image with only 10. Uh, 10 values when we're doing this compression of the data or like the compression of the MNIST um, images. So now we can see we're down at values here of 0.11. Now we have 0.14. So we're just going to run through all 25 epochs here and then we can see the results here at the end. But again, we already add a really nice loss. So now we can see that we have actually trained our autoencoder here for 25 epochs. The loss here doesn't really decrease anymore. Uh, we got down to 0 0.1151 uh, here at loss. So again, this just means that we get like around 10% loss when we're doing our reconstruction of our images. This is actually like still really good uh, compared to we're using this really simple autoencoder. So down here, we're just going to plot some of the images and some of the actual like reconstructed images so we can see um, what is going on and how good it actually like performs. So here we're just going to use matplotlib. We're going to, first of all, we're going to plot the train image and then down here, we're going to, um, to, to, to plot the corresponding reconstruction of our images with our actual like, neural network. So these will be the outputs of our neural networks um, with our reconstructed um, MNIST images. So here we're just going to plot the images uh, as we can see. So this will be our training image that we have trained our autoencoder on. And if we pass on our autoencoder and we decode our actual like a code representation or the different kind of features that we have by these 10 values, so right now we have our train image. We just have 10 values. And then when we decode those 10 values, this is act like the image that we reconstruct. So this is really, really close to our input training image as we can see. 
we get a really nice reconstruction of two we get a re nice reconstruction of seven even nine here some can act actually like argue that this reconstruction here is actually like better or like it actually like looks more like a nine here compared to the training image the same with the eight here it looks more like an eight in the reconstruction compared to like the training or like the crown truth and also the nine here is also fairly good so we can see we lose some information here it gets a bit more uh, blurry over here on the reconstruction side but we can still see what is going on in images and by when we're actually like doing this reconstruction after we have compressed our our data so down here we can now go in and actually like sample two random images and then encode them so now we can actually like go go see if we try to do some interpolation between the values so we can actually like see how how um how the auto encode is here is actually like interpolating between all these um, images that it has in the image data set so here we're just going to take our model we're going to encode them so we have our if value here we are just going to take two images encode those so we actually like have our our values here so this will be our features so this will just be 10 values then we can show the reconstruction of our interpolated code so we can actually like get a sequence so we can see how it interpolates between all the numbers in the MNIST data set. Again, we're just going to have a for loop here running through uh, 20 times. Then we're just going to have our interpolation of our reconstructed images do some decoding uh, with our model here that we trained. We're going to pass it to the CPU and then when we have an interpolation of our act like reconstruction, we're just going to append that to this reconstruction list so we can actually like see how it interpolates between all the different kind of um, numbers that we have in the MNIST data set. We're going to create a video um, here at the end or like in the next block of code here. So I can, you can see what I mean when we're showing the reconstruction of the interpolated codes. So the codes here is just like the features or like these 10 values um, after we've encoded our image in our autoencoder. So if we just run this block of code here, um, it will actually like do this thing. So we can see here we start with a two and then we try to interpolate between a two, um, a nine here and a seven. So this is actually like what our autoencoder has learned when we're doing this um, encoding and decoding and interpolating between the different kind of numbers um, in the latent space when we're doing latent um, interpolation. If we're just doing pixel pixel wise interpolation, we're going to see that this will not be the results that we get. So down here, we're just going to create a short in, uh, animation. We're not going to go into details. We're not just going to run through these images here and create um, a, create a, like a video or an animation of these videos so or like these images. So we can see the interpolation between the two, uh, nine and the seven when we're using these autoencoders. So we'll just run this block of code and then we can see that we do this latent interpolation. We'll just get this animation so we can see what is actually like going on in our autoencoder when we're doing interpolation between numbers um, in our images from the MNIST uh, data set. So this is really cool when we're doing this latent interpolation. If we did like pixel wise interpolation instead, we'll just see the results here again. It is actually just the same code as we just went through. We're creating an animation, but now we're doing pixel interpolation instead. And we can see that we just get these like uh, jumps here. So it just goes from two to a nine to a seven. And it just kind of like just blurs it out. Um, as we can see, it doesn't really interpolate um, as we just saw in the in the other um, in the other animation with our, our um, autoencoder. So this is actually really nice. We can use the autoencoders for a lot of different kind of things. This was just a really simple and basic um, Python script here that I want to show you how we can create a really simple a simple and easy autoencoder, how we can encode the different kind of things, how we get our code vector with a number of values that represents our whole input data. We can press it down, we can decode it again and do an actual like reconstruction of our images. And then at the end here, I just showed you the interpolation between the different kind of things in our, or like the different kind of numbers in our MNIST data set that we're actually using our autoencoders to do because we're doing this reconstruction and then we interpolate between in between those uh, reconstructed images. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future, just well help me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently just doing a computer vision tutorial where we're talking about like everything from basic image operations to camera calibration, stereo vision, and now we're starting to use stereo vision to create point clouds. We're working with point clouds and some different kind of really cool frameworks that we can do a lot of things with. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here. 
or else I'm gonna see you next week, guys. Bye for now.